Yo, what up, guys? Welcome to the podcast. We here at the corner store. This is your go-to source for all things related to cannabis, education, lifestyle, and community. Hosted by myself, Kels Acosta, a content and cannabis connoisseur, and my right hand, Ada, aka Boogie, even though she's sitting on my left. So this podcast aims to break down the stigma surrounding cannabis and provide listeners with accurate information on the benefits of using cannabis, also giving you a fresh perspective on our culture and how we can continue to move forward. So on our show, you'll hear from a variety of guests, entrepreneurs, artists, members, and everyday people who find relief through cannabis use. We'll discuss everything from the latest industry news and trends to practical tips on how to improve your daily life. So join us on our podcast where education, lifestyle, and community intersect. We here at the corner store. Yo, what up, guys? Welcome to Season 1, Episode 1. We here at the Corner Store, the freshest, newest, livest podcast on the scene. You already know. We here with our first special guest today, man. We got my man, Olivier Francois, you know, a.k.a. Flake. And he is a New York-based chef, you know, has his own kitchen. He's been doing his thing for a while now. He has about, you know, just under 10 years of experience when it comes to creating a few foods, man. What's up, bro? What's going on, man? What's up, brother? Everything Happy smooth? To be here. Yes, sir. Good to have you, man. You know you're part of the Bodega fam of anyway. Course, always, always. One of our you own. Know what I'm saying? <laughs> always one of the first. Right, one of the first, man. Day one type <laughs> yes, flow. Sir. Yes, you sir. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, we want to um we want to ask you a couple questions today, you know, just about your experience when it comes to like creating a fused foods, you know, and maybe give people some tips on on how they could, you know, create some stuff of their own too. You know yeah, hundred percent, man. Uh it's definitely a different, a different way of cooking, but it's yeah. also, you know, it's very fun. It's very beneficial. Okay. Fire, fire. We're going to get into that, man. You ready for this, A? Ready. Stay ready, ready so you got to right, cool. get Season ready. Season one, episode <laughs> one. We out here? Yeah, we out here. All right, we out here. We ready. All right, um, so first question, man. Um, What's the what's the type of various products that you that you create when you're, you're making infused foods? I mean, it varies, really, because you can kind of, it kind of works with everything. You know, everybody kind of always wonders how you do infused food, how you do infused food right it kind of works like regular food because you can do butter oil different different extractions for different ways of doing getting the product right right but for the most part um i do butter okay i find it to be a little bit easier you yeah. kind of put butter in anything but it's kind of in everything right so usually i do it i can do a salad i can do a dressing i can do a walnuts i can do a whole protein oh word I the salad flow. that's yeah, good because salad flow is crazy yeah yeah a book been trying to eat healthy you know what i'm saying Adam <laughs> i've trying been trying eat. but it's not working <laughs> my body is sore yeah like i've tried to go to the gym yesterday after i got high and i'm here sore. <laughs> <laughs> right 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 she lit okay so the salad flow so tell me man how'd you get into like infused foods what, what actually got you into that man Actually, it happened like kind of during COVID. Uh, mm. People couldn't really go out. Uh, a couple hit up my brother asking if he knew anybody that would do infused food. Right. He was like, he was like yo, opportunity just came up. He goes, I never, never did it, but I'm pretty sure you can. <laughs> right. Like, you right about that. Right. That we're part. Gonna, oh, we're going to figure it out. That's fine. So, uh, we made some butter, made up a menu, mm-hmm. liked it, and then I just, I kind of just winged it, to be honest. Bro, you saying they're mad easy. Like, it's so yeah, easy. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I got some butter. I just woke up. I just yeah. woke up and put it together. Like, so why don't you want, so for, for everyone at home, because we want to provide some valuable content yeah. to everybody at home, why don't you tell us the process of uh, creating edibles, what that's like? Well, of course, you got to do the extraction, depending on how you want to do it, butter, mm-hmm. oil. You have to kind of cook it with it at a certain temperature to kind of get everything out, and then you have to restrain it. Then once you strain it, everything yeah. out, and get it kind of get that form of liquid, then from there, you can kind of go about how you want to cook or how much you want to add. Personally, I don't really measure. Yeah. But of course, if you're not that experienced with it, you want to, you know, measure your things out, weigh it, cut it, see how much is, you know, what you're putting in your food, of course. For sure, for sure. Okay, yeah. that, that sounds like a detailed yeah. you know, process right there, yeah. for sure. Yeah. So, uh, so why don't you tell us a couple of things that people should know about 
when they're making infused foods because you obviously have a, a good amount of years with experience with that. Uh, can you think of like two or three things you think people should absolutely know when they're creating a foods fuse? Well, one, of course, you should be getting your product at a place that you know is legit. You know, okay. Like Bodega. You, you know, Bodega brand, preferably, of course. Of course. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. But um, that's number one. You know, you don't want to get your stuff anywhere shady where, you know, you might think something might happen or you're not really confident what it is. Right. So, of course, getting legit product is number one. Number two is also measuring, of course, how much you're putting into your food, you know. It's not the same as smoking a joint. So, it's, it's gonna, it's, it'll last a lot longer. It'll right. Come, it'll come... Go away, come, go away. It'll last with you the whole day, depending on how much you eat. Copy. So you should also be you should also be measuring how much you put in your food, and also think about how much you're putting in each meal, because that's also gonna be like you know next thing you know you ate like three four different meals, you had a whole pound. So <laughs> right, you know, right, right. not even thinking about it, you right. know, it happens. So right. that's why usually that's why people don't really like edibles because they always get that that effect like oh my god I couldn't get rid of it. I couldn't get right. rid of it because you're getting right. that edible that. How you don't know how many milligrams is inside of it. One hundred percent. Or you don't know what your potency level exactly. is. Exactly. You know or what, what type of weed to mix in it. So you know. Like, yeah. So it always goes back to number one, getting your product somewhere that you know is legit, but bigger brand, of course. Right. And two, you should also be measuring the amount that you're putting inside your meal and how many meals you're having a day with it. Right. Right. That's with fire. It. That's fire. Because I know a lot of people that ingest, they have no idea what they're ingesting, and when you smoke and when you ingest, it's two different types of highs. One hundred percent. You know, um, there's different types of gummies. There's solventless gummies, you know, where you can actually get the truer essence of the plant, which you could actually choose your your profile when it comes to sativa, hybrid, or indica. You know, for people out there who may not be hip to it, um, sativa is more of an upper, energetic, creative, social type of high. Correct. Right. On the other end of the spectrum, it's the indica. You know, and that's more, when you think of indica. The drowsy. The right. The drowsy. Man. You think of in the couch type yeah, flow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, the yeah, slump. Can't do that. You can't, do <laughs> you can't do that. Right. I can't function. I got to come to work. <laughs> you got to come to work. You know what I'm saying? But that's, that's pre- predominantly used for people that are looking to, to decompress after a long day. Right. You know, uh, or relieve some type of body ailments. I um, mean, then then hybrids are more so. You know, in the middle. You know, they can have a hybrid that's a sativa or a hybrid that's an indica. Um, but those are just moderate type of smoking. Right. You know, chill type of vibes, not too overwhelming. But that's fire. That's fire. So, can you tell us a a, one, a crazy experience that you had on edibles before, though? Edibles. Yeah. Damn. Can you think of a, a crazy experience or a time that you might have ate too much or you? It probably be recently from here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you have? I had is when you guys uh, got the three hundred milligram singles. Oh, the F chems. Mm-hmm. Wow. You guys got it. I was like, you know what? Yeah. I think I need to try that. <laughs> <laughs> so of course I got it. You're right. I took it mm-hmm. to work. I took it. I was like, damn. All right. Chilling, chilling. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> it slapped you. I'm like, yeah. I'm just like, okay. Yeah. I'm like, this shit is okay. Do y'all? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That shit had me crazy. And yeah. you have a high yeah. tolerance, so I, I know that slapped you crazy. That, right. I was that... high for two days. When I... <laughs> <laughs> you took you took it too? Yes. I oh tried, my I tried yeah. a pineapple. What is it? Pineapple Kush. Pi- pineapple yeah. slush. Yeah, yeah. slush. The slush. Pineapple slush. Yeah. I took it on a Saturday. <laughs> I came back to work Sunday. I was I'm still smack. high. I'm finished. Yeah. <laughs> right. I think we all tried them for sure. The F Chem gummies. You can only find them at Bodega. Of course. Make sure you pull up to your local Bodega in Queens. Richmond Hill, um, or here in Soho. So pull up on us. But um, for sure, man, So I guess that is a crazy experience because yeah. I've had those before and that, that is kind of wild. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it was yeah, good. Crazy. But you know what's crazier? Yeah. We're about to do our smoke out session. Smoke out. So we're going to take Bodega Exclusive Flower. Okay. We're going to try it and we're going to describe the profiles for our members. Let's get it. You ready for smoked out? Ready? I'm ready. Right, I said so I'm ready. Get into it. Okay, so can we get a drum roll, please? Smoke roll. Right. A smoke roll? Oh, that's good. I like that. That's fine right there. Okay, guys. So today, for our exclusive flower from Bodega, we're going to be smoking the one and only, the New York City Sour Diesel. Sour man. Diesel. You're not from New York. Yeah. You're you don't not know from New York is. if you don't know about this, you man. Don't know. So let me tell you guys a little bit about this. You can definitely find us at your local Bodega, so make sure you pull up on us. And we got the real Sour Diesel. So we don't got that Aki stuff that people be saying the Sour Diesel. I can right. got the sandwiches. We got the <laughs> official sandwiches. official. Yeah, he got <laughs> yeah, like a referee with a whistle. You know what I'm right. saying? The New York Sour D's is one of my actually one of my favorite strands, man. Um, why I love it is because it's 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 a potent 
potent high, but it's a nice cerebral high, um, and, it, and it's definitely uplifting as well. So it's a popular strand from the 1990s, um, and people have been smoking this in New York City for a long time. And it makes sense, man, because I feel like in New York City, people are always moving around. We of always course. got somewhere to go. We always mm -hmm. got something to do. We're always moving. So I like to get high, but I don't want to feel stuck. I feel like I want to move around. And, and you know what? A lot a lot of the old heads that come in that yeah. aren't members or don't know us from a hole in the wall, they come in specifically to see if we have the sour diesel. Right. And they start questioning it. And then when they see it, their reaction is like, oh, this is that real shit. Right, 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 know about right, this. right. Exactly. And that's what you guys are going to experience when you come through here to Bodega. We customize our experience for you guys. You know, we give you an opportunity to tell us what type of smoker or what type of person you are when it comes to your participation level. And then we kind of just give you a, a, a plethora, a variety of things that you could choose from. And we encourage feedback. We encourage you to try so many different products and, and just, you know, let us know what you really feel about it. So today, guys, we're smoking that New York City Sour D's. But the lightest thing right now, man, is for my guy Flake, man. There you go, oh, bro. Oh, she's You thank already know you. on the house type Come flow. Come on, baby. You know what I'm saying? You know we'll how have we to do smoke it together, of course. Smoke yeah. out. Yeah. You know smoke what I'm saying? Out. Oh, you know, we got the. Hold up. Uh, don't uh, even do uh, that. Uh, don't, uh, even, uh, don't, uh, don't even uh, do that. Uh, don't go. Uh, uh, you got to go with the, own, the uh, one and only Bodega lighter. Right you know what I'm right. saying? Everything branded up. You know, so go ahead. You do the honors, okay. G. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We're going to light it up. We're going to chop it up about this flower and let y'all know what we think about it. Oh, the, okay, the double dragon. Let's get it. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wrote this. Oh, that, that's what you say? <laughs> you know what I'm oh, and we got the Bodega cones on deck too. You know what I'm saying? You know, the branded. Hey, no, we got the official pre rolls. Yeah, the branded is 100. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. When's the last time you smoked sour D's, bro? Right now with Bodega. <laughs> <laughs> right, hey, you know. Yeah. I think I've only smoked it about twice in my life. Twice, and that's only because I've been with you guys. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta I don't let try you know. Nothing. Hey, yo, <laughs> yo, Ada is not a smoker. Yo, that, this is promotional bro. purposes only. She, but she's an experimenter, <laughs> and she, she will experiment. experiment. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I guess they say that's that's what they say in life. You know what I'm saying? If it's if it's good, I'll try it. If it's dope, I'll try it twice. They say something like that. You know what I'm saying? So she's an experiment. She's gonna try the sour D's in a second. If my though. Dominican family is watching, it is just an experiment. It's just an experiment. <laughs> right. And it's better not hey, you better know the blinds too. You better not <laughs> after you hit this, all right? Stop playing around. I got it. Mm hmm Oh yeah, we're gonna say oh, we're gonna, yeah. we gonna say we're gonna pass it around. We're going to do it. Oh, shout out to my man, Jose, in the back. We're definitely going to pass you this too, bro. You know what I'm saying? You know, you need a little Twisted. bit of this right here. Twisted. I would appreciate that. Thanks, guys. Twisted. You know what I'm saying? If you guys don't know about Jose, man, he is a is a wizard, man, when it comes to this videography game, when it comes to this podcast game. He's been he's been in the game for a long time, man. And uh, if you guys need his services, you can't have him because it's exclusive at Bodega. Bodega. You already know, gang, gang. And I might need him for the restaurant too. So you know, he's busy, 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 busy. <laughs> right. But if the price is right, we can negotiate. You know what I'm saying? We can figure it out. But that was a quick pass. I see you. Mm. Okay. Mm. We don't need you to be too lit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we don't need you to be too lit. You know what I'm saying? All right, bro. So let's talk about the let's talk about the flower, man. What you think about the this this sour D's right here, bro? What you think about it? I like the taste of it. The like taste of it? Yeah, it's burning nice. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not like yeah, it's not scratching. Yeah, yeah I don't feel. Like yeah. I'm not coughing it up. Mm -hmm. It hit just right. You know what I'm saying? It has a nice aroma to it. You know what I'm saying? I like how it smells. I like how it tastes. You know what I'm saying? It's smooth. Yeah, it's smooth. I definitely like the taste. The taste, yeah, it's yeah. fire. A lot of times, I feel like people, um, when you smoke, they all have different type of palates. Mm -hmm. People like different things. Some people like gassy stuff. They like. You know, fruity, earthy, flowery, fruity, yeah, tropical, fruity, citrusy, citrusy, citrusy. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I really like tropical, citrusy type of flowers because I like the taste. Mm -hmm. I like to taste it. You know what I'm saying? That nice aroma when mm -hmm. you blow it out, the smell of it. It's nice. I like that. Right, right, right. Chop cookies. Mm, chop cookies. Wow. Chop cookies. Chop cookies is definitely a great yeah. strain right there, man. I kind of want to pick your brains a little bit. So let's take a moment for success. I seen this quote online, right? Okay. And it says... If you want to see the true measures of a man, watch how he treats his inferiors, not his equals. Ooh. So, Kelsey, I know that you're one of the partners here at Bodega. Mm -hmm. Like, I just want to know what you think about that. I think it's a very true statement. Why I think it's a true statement is because uh, 
in my life, I've been around a lot of people that that brought value to the game or people that have not even understood their value. But it's always important mm -hmm. to, you know, to see somebody for their potential and their worth. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, they got to live up to it at some point. Mm -hmm. But that starts with being able to hear people out, listen to ideas. You know, it's it's, it's like a team. Any Everyone on the team has their role. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that same thing that holds true for life. Everyone in life has a role. Right. Whether we we may give them the opportunity to show their potential, mm -hmm. you know, it shouldn't take away from their ability to want to go out and want to show that to the right. world. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like every time I, I meet someone or I talk to somebody, it's an opportunity for, for me to light a, a light a fire in their life. Mm -hmm. You know, just by listening to them, giving them an opportunity to let me know who they are. Mm -hmm. And then encourage them to keep moving forward. So, and that comes from from people. And what I what I have noticed, sometimes really wealthy people are super down to earth. You know what I'm right. saying? Yeah. They we, we all know people sometimes it's like, okay, they're stuck up or whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know, everyone, you know, in their lifetime has met someone, has given you an opportunity, whether to talk, whether to try something, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's panned out for you. And you always thought about it like, damn. If it wasn't for that one person who pushed me or who, who listened to me or who gave me an opportunity. Right. You know what I'm saying? What you think about that, Flake? What you think about that that quote, man? You treat people, every, you treat everyone the same? I mean, of course. I mean, uh, I get treated, people get treated how I get treated. You know, you got, like, what's the quote? You, you get treated how you want to get treated. You know, that's how, that's how it goes around. Yeah. You can't, no one's over you, no one's under you, you know? People I guess it's always, behind, it's also you. like, um, yeah. You know, like it also reflects on what type of business you're running or the type of person you are, how right. other people treat you, you right. know, because I know from experience here, like you guys are very welcoming, but you're also like, get on your, you know, get on your shit. Yeah, yeah. We got your back, but you got to be on your shit. Yeah. And to be in, inside and see the people from the outside, just wonder if we guys are like related mm -hmm. or how do we know each other? It's just been years and you guys literally right. just handpicked a bunch of strangers and we happen to work. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Bedega, man. Shout out to the team because you will be a family, man. We really came together. Um, and it's a collective of individuals. And it's that's what the, the defined meaning of being eclectic, mm -hmm. right? Taking from different people, taking from different places, and making your your situation bigger than life, you know, right. larger than life. We're here at Bedega, it's a lot bigger than all of us, you know what I'm saying? But it's it's the people under this roof that make it a, a home, you know what I'm saying, that make it a family yeah. type flow. That's what no. makes food that special because you get you get so many different people inside the kitchen, and everybody's from different point of views, different from be different backgrounds, have eaten ten different different ways. Right, and then you get everybody inside one kitchen. It's like a big melting pot of ideas and flavors and that things that can just come out of a kitchen. Is yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, one hundred percent, man. I, I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? You know, so I definitely want to pass this to the homie. Is that come come and hit this? Oh, right, 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 right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I know he over here yeah, looking at me. He's like, bro, he's looking at it, dwindling down. No, you halfway through, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, that's yeah, it. You yeah, made it, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, KK, yeah, yeah. we out here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, so that's the flow right there, man. So I, I think that's a, a great moment. We took a second for success to be able to, you know, just think about success as a whole. It, you know, it breaks down to so many different elements. Um, but it's also important to think about success and to visualize it and to to write down your goals and your plans and to move forward with intention. So, mm -hmm. you know, every day you're waking up, you feel better about yourself. You feel good about your direction. You're going to have days where you don't feel, you know, as 100, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, consistency will always be your motivation. Mm -hmm. Even when you're not motivated, if you're consistent, it'll get you back into the yeah, swing of things. Of course. You know what I'm saying? And so the support system. Right. Make sure you have a good foundation where you start. They're going to build you. Right, right. 100%. Gang. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you already know. Yeah. All right. So, okay. Second for success. What we got next, A? What we doing next? All right. I got something for y'all. I'm going to give you five different culture topics that's going on right now. Okay. Okay? You're going to tell me if it's flames, if it's fire, like mm -hmm. you with it, you agree with it. I was lame, trash. We don't want that. That's just that block work. You know okay. Flame for lame. Right, we got it. Okay. All right, so Let's I don't know it. if y'all seen this all over Instagram or Facebook or whatever it was, but a football player, Ashraf Hakimi. Oh, I seen that. Uh oh. I, I heard his about him. His wife wanted to divorce though. him. Hold on, his yes. wife what? 
Yeah. She wanted to divorce him. She, uh-huh. she actually filed for divorce. She wanted half of his net worth. Yeah. What ends up happening, he requests half of hers because all his money is under his mother's account. So mm. he's legally broke. Even though he has an $80 million contract, she gets wow. nothing. That's flames. Fire flames. That's definitely fire flames. Fire flames. Fire flames. <laughs> yes. Ooh, yes. Yes. More fire. No, I got to hear why. I got to hear yeah. why. What? That I shit mean, sounds because crazy. How many times you hear in the universe right. women out here finessing guys right. for everything they have? Now, don't get me wrong. I feel like a woman, if you, if you stood by your dude, you know what I'm saying? You held it down. You right. deserve a little son, son. Of course. But when you talking about half, you know what I'm saying? Or you talk about, it, it's crazy, but... She tried to finesse him, but my man put the money in his mama's I name. I mean, she man. got a couple millions, but not like him. Yeah. No, but you see, but she went for a number. Like she already had a you game so? plan what she wanted. Yeah. Like she on a back burner, like already thought about it. <laughs> so it was good that his mama had all the bread. Right. There was a report <laughs> saying that anytime he wanted something, he just texted his mother. I think yeah, that's kind of crazy as a grown man. I read that. My money, I got to text my mom. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, hey. Think hey, about yeah. it, though. Think about it, though. It's definitely strategic. It it's is. definitely strategic because his, his but he'd been doing it for a long time. Uh-huh. So he was already hip to it. And his mm-hmm. mom was probably already hip to it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that must say something about, you know, uh, their marriage. You know what I'm saying? He might, they might have known, like, yo, look, shorty, she cool, but she might not be cool down the road. And his relationship Could with be. his mother because she's like, who better also watch my whole net worth than the woman who raised me and put me right. put me in mm-hmm. position to where I am right now? I think it's fucking crazy. And his mother was yeah. probably in his ear too. Like, don't be trusting these, you know, yeah. you know right. what's going on out here. Don't be trusting them. Right. And look, she that's tried wild. to swindle him. Yeah, I that's think wild. that's fucking crazy. I think it's <laughs> actually, as a female, and it's going to sound strange, I think it's flames. Yeah. 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 Right. Boys, but I'm a like, Fire that seems flame. like right. something a female would have came up with. Right. So I'm, I'm going to give him the props Come for on. that. Right. But we're going to move to the next one. There's a lot one. of wins that you guys are able to walk away with. We'll, 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 <laughs> right. You can take this L today. Right. Right. Win. <laughs> Unanimous right. flames on that one. What's right. right. the next topic? All right. Flames or lames? Scammers using AI voice generators to sound like famous artists artists or your friends or your family members that's lame as hell super lame of course that's that's scary lame. they're evolving yeah, lame. I give him that but that's still that's extra so lame good. I think I seen a couple posts with that and I seen one dude who did like a um, I think he did uh, a Jay Z joint you know what I'm saying and it was so scary because it sounded so realistic that's crazy they all but do. you know that's to do that it's like the, the drama that that brings about people Using your name, probably saying stuff, doing mm-hmm. whatever. You don't know what's real from fake now. And I feel like the world we live in, it's so hard to know what's real from fake nowadays. Already, I mean, you know, if you were on point, you you know, you can pay attention to certain things. You know, they actually used the generator to fake a little girl's kidnapping and extort the parents. What? They they copied her voice off in Instagram posts, Facebook posts. And put it all together. All together. Nah, that's not. And got lit, money so. out of it. That that's that's lit. scary. Nah, but the scary. world is going towards AI. Everything is AI. Yeah, it is. AI. It is, it is, man. I, hey, I've been on Chat GPT every day, <laughs> <laughs> asking mad questions. Like, oh, really? I've been testing every time. <laughs> Tell me more. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like right. mad evil laugh. All right. That's fucking scary. All right, so that was lame. All right, next one. Weed is now legal in, in New York. Mm-hmm. It's been legal for about a year now, right? Copy. Yep. There's studies that New Yorkers are less rude, less aggressive of what they're known to be. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you come to New York, you expect the, the yeah. fuck is this attitude, it, which you're looking at. Like, right. you angry for no reason. It's 9 a.m. Right, right. So studies have shown that since it's been legal, New Yorkers have been more peaceful. Or more calm. Or more, more peaceful, friendly. more calm. Okay. more friendly. I mean... The that's violence flames. is still there. It's fire flames. Yeah, I mean, that's flames. It's kind of true. No one got time for that when they smoking they joint getting moving to where they trying to go to. 100%. You know what I'm saying? Especially when they smoke in front of a cop. <laughs> especially. <laughs> right. Especially when they smoke. They're the calmest. <laughs> right, right. 100%. And that's what, we, that's what we're doing here, guys. At, you know, at the Corner Store Podcast, we are breaking the stigma of what people think about, you know, cannabis in general because... It's a good point that you brought up that people do, uh, you know, they they kind of gravitate towards peace. In my experience, when they consume cannabis, 100%. right, versus 100%. other options, you know, where I I, 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 I occasionally like a drink now and then. I like tequila, you know what I'm saying. But when I feel like people drink, they drink at different paces. Everyone drinks at their own speed. 
You know what I'm saying? Like somebody like, you might finish your first drink and this yep. person already on their third. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah blink of an eye. Yeah. What I like about cannabis is you're able, you know, to share in a community, in a society you can pass around and everyone has that same experience. Mm -hmm. And every time I've been around people that smoke, they've been more chill, more vibed out. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like that's true. That's, that's flames true. to me. That's true. Well, flames, I agree 100%. You know, before you look... Look one way, you gotta look the other before they start cursing you out. Especially if you're a tourist, you know, right. from here, everybody's scared. Mm -hmm. All right, by nice and chill, heading to work, right? Yeah. Having a bagel and cream cheese and bacon, <laughs> right? That part. <laughs> All right, cool. Let's talk about this. How y'all feel about TikTok? Because the universities in Florida have banned TikTok from the campuses. Flames are lame. I think that's lame as fuck. <laughs> okay, why well, you think it's lame? Right. Yeah, Honestly, that. you know where social media is going. Like everything runs through social media, and TikTok has probably the most views. You can literally blow in up anything up on there. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people that don't don't have their calling and they're in college enrolled in this, paying thousands of dollars, and they decide this is what they want to do, and they easily post a TikTok, yeah. go viral, set their life up, and continue to be on there. Mm -hmm. It's also very informative. Like, Find out. You can literally type up anything on There's TikTok. There's also a lot of yeah. dumb shit on there too that people have been doing and people have been hurting themselves with too. So it's like, yeah. that's why they're like, is it worth it? Right. I mean, okay, so it sounds like we got to split the decision right but here. I you mean, if, you want I one? just think it's dumb. If it's been on campus, mm -hmm. I'm going to walk across the street off campus and get on TikTok. <laughs> like I'm confused. How does that work? Yo, she gotta figure it out. She gotta <laughs> figure it out. Hey, if you watch it right work? now, that's a cheat code right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just leave campus. Yeah. And go across the street. And go and figure you it win. out. One hundred percent. I was confused. Uh, I think my take on it to be real, man. If I, if I had to choose between flames and lane, because you chose lane, right? I mean, or, is it lame? Or you chose or flames? Which you chose? Is it flames lame? I mean, I don't. Yeah. I don't care for TikTok that much already. So okay. it's kind of like the to, to I mean, it's on campus. I mean, you yeah, yeah. survive. Like you said, just leave campus. You should yeah, be all right, right? I say I'm, I'm kind of indifferent about it. The only yeah. reason why, because I feel like I see where both of you are coming from. I see that the value is is definitely high on TikTok. Oh, absolutely. You know, you can learn a lot of things on there. Um, but I see the other side of it too, where I feel like a lot of people be doing goofy stuff. You know what I'm saying? Just for attention. And then what it does is it takes your attention span and it makes it even shorter. Like it's already a proven fact that, you know, humans now have an attention mm -hmm. span of about eight seconds, which is even shorter than a goldfish's attention span at nine seconds. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's real life. That's ridiculous. And so it now, is. so now you think about all this content we consume, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, you know, Snapchat, you know, TikTok, you know, um, I think that there's always there's pros and there's cons, but you know, I guess I guess something different about it. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. Cool. What well, we got All for right. the next topic? Happiness over funds. So more and more people, especially Gen Z, mm -hmm. have been quitting their nine to five. They mm. rather struggle through their bills as long as they have a peace of mind, right? Emotional health, mind, you know, all that. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting a nine to five, how do you guys feel about that? Mm. I mean, that opens the doors. Like COVID, you had to be locked in. All you had was money, but right. you were at peace of mind. And all these entrepreneurs came out of nowhere and started businesses and started doing mm -hmm. creative things. But that also happened because the world's able to kind of like, quote unquote, reset itself. Because mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of bullshit happening on a daily day basis. Mm -hmm. It was bullshit happening, but not as much as it would be if people was out and about doing it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because yeah. even like water was different. The air was different. Birds were around more often. Like you kind of saw that the it was different. But it's like I don't know. Yeah. One of the funds. I mean, I feel you have to. It depends what you said. Yo, you said happiness. Is. If yeah. You're right with like where you are. Then that's happiness. If you see if you see more for yourself, then I think you just have to work to to go get that copy. Go copy get that happiness. I think I think for me in my perspective, I think people should understand that life just isn't about happiness. Mm. Right, there's more things to life than just happiness. Yeah, it takes sacrifice. You know, yeah, it, it takes sacrifice, and and honestly, you know, you can think of a how many days where you had a good day. You weren't necessarily happy, but you had a good day. It was chill. It was you know, it was alright. You got some things done. You were productive. You mm -hmm. know, made a couple phone calls. You know, cashed a couple of checks. Did you know, got some deposits. 
you know, or seen some people that you haven't seen in a while. And it was just a good day, you know. So happiness is important, but there are a lot of other elements to life than just being happy. You know what I'm saying? And I would say that no matter who you are, you got to learn how to how to keep your expenses low. You know what I'm saying? Or live according to, you know, your, you know, your your budget. Right. You know what I mean? Live according to your budget. And it's it's cool to plan, to prepare in advance. Um, you know, I'm actually one of those people that prefers my happiness over the funds. But I okay. have a certain extreme, you know? Yeah. So don't go out there and quit your jobs. But I do feel like if I'm, I like my job or I'm good at what I'm doing, even if it is taking all my time, yeah. I try to, you know, rearrange it. Mm-hmm. Now, if I don't like it, but it's paying my bills and I'm living good, that's just a sacrifice I'm going to have to make and Copy. find happiness in something outside of work. Yeah. That's all it is. Like, yeah. No, I mean, I'm it's... Quit, I'm quick. <laughs> like, <laughs> listen, I, listen. I mean, you I'm know... I'm a quitter. <laughs> you, you know, you're part of the younger generation, so yeah. you like to, to have fun, and I get that. You know, right. I was young, er, you know what I'm saying? And I, I used to live that life, too, and I still like to go out. I travel a lot, too, but mm-hmm. it's just... You start to, as you mature, you start to understand, like, okay, cool. There's different, there's different phases in life. You know what I'm and, saying? And you realize you don't need to have fun all the time. Oh, yeah. you can preserve the fun right, to right, like right. to to one that actually matters. Right. Because a lot of people grow up differently too. A lot of people That's sometimes what, they miss yeah. that whole train yeah, where you weren't fun. even lit until so now you have a chance to be lit and go exactly. out and do different things, exactly. regardless of your age or what held you back from those experiences. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's fire. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That's it? I, I gave you five. I'll give you more. That's five already? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'll give you more. That was fast. That was, that was fast. You know what I'm saying? Okay. We got an extra one? Yeah, extra yeah. Yeah. bonus. Yeah. We'll take a bonus joint. A bonus yeah. round. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. That's how it be, son. Right. That's cool. Yeah, but yeah, oh, we'll take a moment right now uh, while she's looking for another topic. Yo, you guys definitely have to come through to your local bodega. We are a private cannabis club, you know, here uh, at 33 Spring Street. We're also at Richmond Hill in uh, Queens. You guys have to come through, check out our products. They are efficient, man. We have flowers, vapes, and edibles, pre-rolls, Thanks. you know what I'm saying? Everything on deck, you know what I'm saying? We got merch, you know, we have a vibe, we have experience. You know, and we throw events every single month, man. So if you guys aren't hip to us, you know, what we do is we throw events for people to come through to network, to to socialize with others, you know, like-minded individuals or people that are just looking to, you know, to create an opportunity for themselves. It's a great place for you, man. Definitely come through. Uh, we have a lot of events coming up. We have fight nights. We have, you know, infused pizza nights. We have game nights. We have, uh, I don't know, karaoke we might have. We have me. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, got, right. she got me. Right, right, right. 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 We have puff and paint. Puff and paint. Uh, right. Puff and paint. I, I think I named it puff and paint. Um, mm. but uh is there one that I'm missing? No? Uh, you t- yeah, I think you hit them all. Yeah, I think I hit them all. But yeah, definitely guys gotta pull up. It's lit, it's a vibe. All right, hey, what we got? All right. Um Gen Z has been creating a lot of controversy on social media in regards to gender roles, identity and equality. So they're trying to go against the odds of society where man is manly and protects and provides mm-hmm. and the woman just gets catered to and handles the house. So right. now men want to be catered to. Mm. Women, big bosses, want to be the providers mm-hmm. and in charge and running the house. Right. Or the boss babes. To, yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a very interesting topic. Uh, I would say that gender roles are extremely important. You know what I'm saying? Because since the beginning of time, you know, things have kind of functioned a certain way. Right. You know, optimally. You know, things can function however they want to, but does it function optimally? Is it in the best interest? Right. You know, is there a reason why if a man runs through the door right now that us, me, Flake, and Jose will most likely, you know, attend to that ASAP instinctively because that's it's instinctive in us to protect right. and to make sure we hold it down. And it may be instinctive for you to be like, oh... What's going on? I don't know. Can somebody help me out? Can you protect me? Let me get me? out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's your first instinct. So things that like that, and I use that example because it's so, it's so biological. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's in your biology. Like, right. yo, I need help. I need protection. You know what I'm saying? And we let you know that, like, even when you're here, you're always protected. People always got your back. Um, and 
So I think gender roles are important because instinctively, and, and it's just biology sometimes. But you know, I do believe that you know it's okay for women to want to to go out and and, and provide mm-hmm. for themselves because the world we live in is different now, where you know, there's a lot of single moms, right? There's a lot of people that that go out and they're so more they're more so ambitious to try to achieve different things. Yeah, definitely. You know, in terms of business. Which is fire, which is fire 100%. But I think a lot of women would love to, 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 to have be a vulnerable. family, to be vulnerable, right? To be right. the, you know, to be the protector of their children, right? To provide and to right. teach them, you know, but there's so many more things they can do. But, you know, I also feel like well. that comes from where, how they were raised, where they come from, mm-hmm. and the environment they've been in, like the men that have been around them. Right. Throughout their lives, I know a lot of women that have a lot of daddy issues or mommy issues or mm-hmm. whatever it may be, or just did a bad relationship, a bad partnership, whatever it was. Yeah. And they were they have to build this, I'm a boss and I'm the big homie and I'm the protector energy. Right. I can do it by myself. Yeah, right. that right. I can do it by myself mentality. I'm one of those. <laughs> yeah, I feel it. I know but you know, I but you I know, know there's know. women that knows how to just tone it down sometimes when mm-hmm. they're put into that predicament. Like when I come to work, I don't feel like I have to be that because you guys are here. You know what I mean? Right. But if I was outside, that's the mentality I would have. Right. Or anybody that meets me. Right. So I definitely feel like a lot of women just don't get the space to be that vulnerable. Yeah, that feminine anymore. Yeah, for sure. What you think, Flick? I mean, it's kind of true. It's funny that you say that because a few a friend of mine were actually talking about that too. Uh, mm-hmm. Bartender friends of mine, you know, like because of what they seen growing up, like with their with their parents' relationship, that that's why they kind of the way they are now, independent, do everything themselves. They don't need nobody. And, uh, yeah. So it's just kind of you know it kind of it kind of goes back to what you said. It's kind of how you're growing up and what you're seeing and what's around you. You kind of mm-hmm. you build that shield. You big that you break that stigma around yourself to kind of. Know, to protect yourself as well, because you, right. you don't want to leave yourself open because you've seen what's you've seen what's possible. Yeah, one hundred percent. Okay, I see your take on that. Yeah, it's it's important for um, for everyone to tap into themselves and to understand you know their purpose in life and right. mm-hmm. what they're what they're meant to do. Because that I think that's even bigger than all of of, of everything. Right. Like, what is your purpose here on this planet? You know, what I'm saying, it, it, you know, it's got to be to help people to some type of capacity. So I feel like everyone has that obligation on this planet to help the next person. They say one hand washes the other. Always. You know what I'm saying? So whatever it is that you choose to embark on, whatever journey is you choose to embark on, make sure that you're doing it wholeheartedly and you're doing it with good intentions wherever you go. And you're doing it for yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or Yeah, and you're doing it for yourself, yeah. which in turn may be doing it for other people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You, can, you, can, yeah. you, don't, you know? No one's gonna motivate you more than yourself. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, That's so true. you can have all, su- all the support in all the world, the, the the strongest foundation, right. and if you don't believe in yourself, that's not going you're nowhere. Gonna do it, right? right. We're gonna do it. Right. right. Appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you for coming through, Yo, my man. Baby. Slate, man, you happy to be know. here. Happy be here. You know, it was our first episode. Let's go. You know, got the special guest Flake. You know what I'm saying? AKA. Olivier Francois, Francois, you know what I'm saying? A <laughs> hey, Boogie Adder, you know what I'm saying? Appreciate no you. No cookies. No, no cookies. Hoodie. You know what I'm saying? No more cookies. You know what I'm saying? And your boy Kells, man. We here, guys, at Bodega. Appreciate you guys for stopping through. You can check us out. What's your IG? Or what's your handle, man? Uh, you can find me on IG on Flakes Food, uh, F-L-A-K-E-S. Okay. Food. For and sure. That's it. You already know. How can we find you, A hey, Book? You can find me on the Bodega page, Bodega mm-hmm. Soho, or my personal page, A. Rouche. Where you already know. Hey guys, you can find me at any Bodega. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm always here, <laughs> tapped in on the block. Um, you can find me on social media at Kells Acosta. We locked in, man. You already know. Gang, gang. I'll see you guys next time. Episode two. Yeah. We'll be coming back real soon.